Bandwidth for this week in sales provided by liquidweb.com. Two, one. You can get 50% of your voicemails returned. <laughs> now that sounds like straight up puffery. Watch me as I grill my guest today on his outlandish claims on today's episode of This Week in Sales. Hello and welcome to This Week in Sales. I'm Kevin Gaither, the VP of Sales at BetterWorks here in Santa Monica. You may recall the goal of the show is to help sales professionals with tips and tactics and techniques to help them improve their performance right now. Today's guest is Tibor Shanto, principal with Renbor Sales Solutions, a firm that delivers sales execution and not talk. Tibor, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thanks for coming on. Tibor, what's your nightmare sales job? Uh, my nightmare sales job, interesting. Um, I guess it's where there's no goals or process or parameters where you're just sort of running around without any direction. <laughs> that would certainly be a, be a nightmare. Is that a theoretical or have you ever been in that situation before? Uh, I think early in my career I've been there. Since then I've gained enough experience and confidence to leave a company when I see it. Right. <laughs> That's right. It's a nightmare in the in the making, no doubt about it. Well, yeah, good. Well, Tibor. Well, Tibor, before we uh, introduce you properly, uh, let's have a word from our sponsor. How many times have you heard that the contract is signed on my desk and I just need to scan or fax it over? Asking your buyers to print, sign, scan, or fax back a contract creates the hassle of extra steps. EchoSign simplifies the problem by making contracts digital. EchoSign is extremely easy to use for senders and signers, owned by Adobe so it's a trusted source, and integrates with all major CRMs, Salesforce, NetSuite, and Sugar. Call 877-324-6744 and use the promo code this week in sales to take advantage of a special discount they have offered for our viewers only. So my guest today is Tibor Shanto. Tibor is a recognized speaker. He's also author of the award-winning book, book Shift, Harness the Trigger Events that Turn Prospects into Customers, and Sought After Trainer. His article, How to Shorten Your Sales Cycle, was voted number one by readers of top10salesarticles.com. Tibor's work is regularly featured in numerous uh, publications and leading sales websites. A 25-year B2B sales veteran, Tibor has developed an insider's perspective on how the right information can be used to shorten sales cycles, increase close ratios, and create sales growth. Called a brilliant sales tactician, Tibor works with organizations to execute their sales process by using the right combination of strategy and executable tactics. Visit Tibor and Renbor Sales Solutions at www.sellbetter.ca or www.youtube.com forward slash sellbetter. You know, so Tibor, I, I'm having you on the show today because I saw you out there in the Twitter sphere making some pretty outlandish claims that you could get 50% of your voicemails responded to. And uh, look, man, I I've been selling for nearly 20 years. And when I say I don't buy it, it's straight up puffery. I I I'm not buying what you have to say. I really mean that. So, so this, is, uh, you know, this is your shot uh, to, to, to redeem yourself if, uh, if you even feel the need to redeem yourself. <laughs> well, I won't look at it as having to redeem myself, but I am willing to explain myself and how I do it. Um, although I will say about the puffery, I did give up smoking some years ago, but, uh, I, I understand that it's an outlandish claim and I think, um, you know, people are frustrated by voicemail, even though it's been around quite a while. It's interesting how salespeople have been able to simulate newer technologies such as internet or social media and other things, but for whatever reason, they continue to struggle with, uh, the concept of uh, voicemail. And I think for a couple of reasons. I think the reason that I have success is I look at voicemail differently than many salespeople. And if you break up the sales cycle and various tactics that you're going to use, you have to know why it is that you're doing what you're doing. And I think with most 
salespeople with, vo with voicemail, they try and accomplish the wrong thing. So right out of the gate, they're headed down the wrong direction, which is why they're not having success. Um, if you look at voicemail as strictly an instrument to get a call back, then the nature of the voicemail changes. And if you bring into it other elements, uh, human nature, the way that people think versus the way that people respond. And I think most people, when they use voicemail, they want people to think about certain things about their company, the value, whatever value prop their marketing department has put together, um, not realizing that a lot of that is just going to turn somebody off who's listening to voicemail. Whereas if you take a different approach, a different tactic, if you will, and look at voicemail as a means of getting a response in the form of a callback, and that's when you switch into the next mode, whether that's to get an appointment or if you're an inside salesperson to get engagement with a customer, whatever the case might be. So I think the reason that I'm able to get more response responses to voicemail is my goal uh, and my destination is different and as a result of that what I say what I do and why I do it is different and I get the callbacks now again once I get the callback it's up to me to convert that to whatever my desired outcome is whether that's an appointment or a sale over the telephone but never do I use voicemail as either trying to sell or to try and get um, engagement with a client or an appointment. It's strictly there as an instrument to get a call back. And if you use it any other way, you're going to experience what most people do, which is a terribly frustrating response rate. But if you use it to get a response, you're going to get a response, and then it's up to you to bring your next set of skills to play. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the goal of the show being tips tactics right. and techniques to help uh, sales professionals improve right now. So I, I, and, uh, and Renbor Sales Solution is a firm that delivers sales execution and not talk. So, right. uh, so this is your opportunity to like say, okay, what are we actually gonna do? Let, okay. Can you give us a few examples, please? Sure. So it's a fairly simple thing, and, and you were good enough to highlight the uh, YouTube address uh, early on, and there's quite a lengthy piece there and, and a couple of pieces that touch on voicemail, how to use it, and so forth. But to your question, um, I think, again, people have to realize that if you think about voicemail, you have to be somewhat counterintuitive, and you also have to consider... Um, how it is that people respond. So one thing, if it, I'll bet you if it ran and we picked up the phone now and dialed you know, 90, 90 people who, who have their voicemail on, their outbound message somewhere in there is going to say, please leave a detailed message. So most people feel compelled to follow the instruction and leave a detailed message. And I'm concerned about it that the more detail that I leave, the more reason the person can make up their mind as to why they don't want to call me back. Because let's face it, 90% of the people that we're going to phone probably already have a form of the product or service that we're trying to sell. So if we say that we're calling up because we have the latest and the greatest, who knows, scanners or copiers or whatever, they're going to look around. They're going to say, we have a copier. I don't need to call this person back. So there's a tendency among salespeople to display all the knowledge and information that they can, mm -hmm. where they should be counterintuitive and be very minimalist. Um, the other thing to consider is the human mind hates a mystery. And, you know, we all like to close mental files. So the idea in a voicemail is to create a bit of a mystery and then make it easy for them to resolve the mystery. And, and the resolution I'm looking for is that call back. So, you know, if you've ever been to a party and you're talking to somebody about a movie, but neither you can remember the actor's name who was in the movie, and it really sort of bothers you for a few minutes. And then when you remember, there's almost a sense of relief or catharsis, and you can go back to what you were doing before. So you almost want to create that kind of atmosphere in a voicemail. Long explanation of a very short process. So what I do is, um, first of all, I try and understand what the company, what, what sector they're in. So. And I look for companies that I have done business with in that same sector. So if you go to my website, you can see some of my clients. Uh, one of them happens to be Business Development Bank of Canada. So let's say I was calling one of the other banks in Canada. I bring to play the fact that I've done business with Business Development Bank of Canada. So my voicemail is as follows. If I'm calling John Smith, then I'll call them up and I'll say John Smith. My name is Tibor Shanto. I'm calling you from Renbor or whatever your company happens to be. And uh, I was going to say something different. Let me finish. So I'll call up and I'll say, John Smith, this is Tibor Shanto. I'm calling you from Renbor. Next thing I give him is my phone number because until they've made up their mind, they'll continue to take data. And one of the pieces of data I want them to capture is my phone number. 
Tibor. So, John Smith, it's Tibor Shanto calling you from Renbor. I can be reached at, and then slow down and give your number in a way that they can catch it. Most people, sometimes I would argue the reason they don't call back is they didn't have a chance to grab your number and they don't feel like rewinding time after time after time. So when you leave your phone number, visualize yourself writing that phone number down. So when I call John Smith, Tibor Shanto, I'm calling you from Renbor. I can be reached at 416-822-7781. And then I give them a third-party referral of a company that's either a competitor um, I like to go for competitors because that gets people's juices flowing. Um, and so, again, if I was calling one of the other banks, I would say when they're calling me back, you can reach me at 416-822-7781. Please reference Business Development Bank of Canada. And then I put the phone down. And the idea is to create a mystery, some sort of compelling reason for them to call you back because all they have is my name, my company name, and a reference to one of their competitors. And that is the trigger that gets them to call me back, is they're wondering, why is this person, in my case with a funny name, but why is this person calling me, referencing you know, this competitor of mine? And most of these people who eventually I have meetings with or who turn into clients, and today one of my biggest clients started in a voicemail exactly as I mentioned now. When I ask them why it is they called back, it was the curiosity factor. People are curious, and if you make it easy for them to resolve that, then they'll take steps to resolve it. A couple of other things that people do, again, from a mechanics and a tactician or a tactical point of view, one of the things that salespeople like to say on the phone, they leave a voicemail, and I just this week was observing an inside sales team. They love to say, you know, please call me back at your earliest convenience. Nothing smells more like a salesperson over the phone than that series of words, please call me back at your earliest convenience. Because really it's for the convenience of the salesperson that they're making that statement. So mm -hmm. again, when I transition from my name and my company name, I say something to the effect that I can be reached at, and you have to say it authoritatively. It's almost like they're getting a call from the IRS, if you will. You know, I can be reached at, or you can reach me at, or call me back at, Again, it's not because I want to be rude and, and I don't want to say please call me at your earliest convenience, but there's a lot of dynamics at play. And what I want to do is make sure that that person is wondering who is this, why do they sound so officious or semi-officious, maybe I should call them back real quick. And that's generally what happens. I generally get that call back within the first 48 to 72 hours after leaving the message. That's pretty amazing, but how often do you get, I mean, I, that's that's phenomenal. I mean, that's not just pretty amazing. That's that's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, when I was tracking this years ago, we were getting something like 1.3% uh, call returns back. And the ones that were the most vague were the ones that, that got the re return calls back. Um, hi, this is Kevin with business.com. Uh, so and so at your company said we should call you, call us back at such and such. But what we found was that there was oftentimes, uh, or let's see, often enough, times where the prospect was actually kind of irritated. In other words, they felt duped by, by that statement. Now, do you get that every, every so Absolute, often? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and part of being a professional salesperson is being ready, right? So I don't worry about the extreme anomalies. If you will, if you look at the bell curve, there's always gonna be 10% of the outliers at either end. So I worry about the 80% the in the middle. And among those 80%, about half the time, they will ask me, why did you leave so-and-so as a reference? Or why did you leave this company as a reference? And I quite candidly tell them that, you know, I make a lot of calls in the course of the day. The number that I leave you is my mobile number. It's an easy way for me to identify which vertical in. And by the way, in addition to business development bank, we also also worked with this company and then I go into exactly what it is that we do which is help people improve their pipeline activity shorten their sales cycle and improve their forecasts in the process so yes I get that question asked but I have to be prepared for it since I initiated the process to begin with um, so when they ask that I explain very rarely and when I say rarely I've been running Renbor now for eight years I make roughly about you know 60 to 100 cold calls a week, and about half of those end up in a voicemail. So do the math. I've only had two people who were so irritated. One of them threatened to call my mother and ask her what kind of child she raised, um, and the other one thought that I was the devil incarnate. Well, that's two out of thousands, right? 
I'm not going to run my business for fear that the third one's going to come sometime next year because I can also point to checks and clients who've hired me over and over and over again because they return the voicemail. So yes, you will get asked that question. My experience personally, about half the people who call back will say, by the way, why did you leave this company as a reference? I explain it to them, move straight into what I would do in an appointment setting call because in my case, I'm looking to meet with them face to face. And rarely, again, with the exception of those two, right. um, and I will look at those as the two, the, you know, the, the two exceptions that make the rule. So yes, you will get asked. If you're ready, it's not an issue. If you're not ready, then it's an issue. But if you're not ready, then you're probably failing elsewhere in sales too. Right, exactly. Good plan for success. I love that. So the structure of that voicemail, let me recap for those playing the home yeah. game. It's uh, right out of the gate. This is give your name, give your I, company name, Right. My number is, please right. call me back, regarding name a competitor. Did I hear you right? right? Absolutely. So again, name, company, um, again, I can be reached at or some form of authoritative, suggestive in your voice and intonation. Again, sales is partly acting, right? Um, that this is an urgent matter and then leave that third-party reference dangling. Now, sometimes if you don't have a direct competitor, I'll go to their website and I'll see if we have a common client. I'll use that as a reference. If we have a common supplier, I'll use that as a reference. If I'm calling into a smaller center and I've done business with a fairly large footprint in the area, I'll use them as a reference. My favorite is the direct competitors. You were, you were peeking right at the, you know, hey, it's going to be a competitor or a supplier. Yeah, I... I I go for the bone. So if I go for the most direct competitor that I've done business with. So the example I was giving, as an example, not factual, if I've done business with Coke and I was prospecting Pepsi, I would leave Coke. Very good. Uh, Very good. Excellent. So, so T, go ahead. You were going to say something then. Yeah, I was going to say one other thing is that if you're, in a, if you're working for a company that's commonly known and people suspect why you're calling, the thing with voicemail, as I said earlier, is think about being a minimalist. So if your voicemail is not working, think about what you can take out as opposed to what you can put in. People instinctively want to put more stuff in. Maybe if I pack some stuff in there, they'll call me back. You need to think counterintuitively. If you feel that it's the, if you feel that the name of your company is recognizable and it's causing people to have second thoughts, take that out. Very good. Um, I don't, I don't like to go down to well, hi Joe, it's Tibor, but again, I sometimes call and say Tibor Shanto, and then it goes straight to the number. Right. Excellent. Good. Good. So let's wrap up on this uh, final topic. I know I've read some uh, blog posts out there uh, that you have uh, written about time management. You got some yeah, well, I, I write a lot about time. Um, I'm not a big fan of the concept of time management. In fact, I think it's a stupid concept because, if you will, time is already managed. Uh, there's 60 minutes to an hour, 24 hours to a day, seven days to a week. And whether you're on the lunar calendar, whether you're in China or Seattle, everybody sees that as, as time being managed. So I'm more... I like to get uh, the people that I work with to think about time allocation. What are they going to allocate their time to? And if you will, in North America, we have about 1,760 hours of FaceTime with customers. And if you think of that in context, if you had 1,760 hours that you were given by your company and your quota was a 10% growth, where would you allocate your time to in order to get the growth that your company is looking for? And if you extend the investment analogy, are you going to invest some of it in bonds? Are you going to invest some of it in derivatives? Are you going to invest some of it in equities, keep some of it in cash? And it's the same way in sales. What are the key high value activities that you have to perform through the sales cycle, so not on a daily basis, but throughout the sales cycle that will get you to be successful. So once you've allocated your time to the right activities, then you need to manage your activities within the time that you've allocated to them. But I think if you get on this time management aspect of things, you're continuously going to be chasing something that's not attainable. But if you think about what has to get done for you to succeed, how much time that requires, and then allocate that time to it, then you have a much better platform for success. Excellent, I love that. Well, Tibor, that's all we uh, have for this week. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming on the show. My pleasure, I enjoyed it very much. I know, despite the technical difficulties, I think we got some real good information uh, and uh, I think we put the puffery to rest. What do you think? Yes, I don't have 
I don't have to take up smoking again. Don't have to take up smoking. Well, that's great. Well, listen, uh, if anybody out there has any questions for me, and I know you do, please feel free to email me at askkevin at thisweekin.com. Of course, feel free to like our Facebook fan page at This Week in Sales and tweet at us. I love getting those tweets from you guys. That's at Sales Week. And of course, download the iTunes podcast. And finally, you can find our shows, the whole slew of them, at www.youtube.com forward slash show forward slash This Week in Sales. Join us next week where I have Gil Cargill from here in Los Angeles on the, on the show, and we're going to talk about pipeline management and pipeline inspection. He's one of my favorites out there. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great week of selling.